Another one, Gould. Yeah, look, two up, two down, just like this one. Twenty thousand pounds. Oh, blimey. That's marvellous, isn't it? Bloody marvellous. See? Old Mac was right. He said that, Mr. Macmillan Senior. He said, vote to all you said, we'll make you all cut this. And they're right, I've done it. Oh, blimey. I mean, I've only been in office two years, and already this house is worth twenty thousand pounds. <laughs> You know, under your Labour Party, it's only worth six hundred pounds, wasn't it? And you ask me why I vote Tory? Oh, blimey! Ah, that's not the real price. That price is inflationary. Oh, so it's a real price in a paper, isn't it? Twenty thousand pounds. This house is worth only on paper. Only on paper. Not only on paper, Sonny. In my pocket, if I want to sell it. Look, if you sold this house for twenty thousand pounds, right? Yeah. And you bought next door. I wouldn't buy next door. Yeah, but say you did. <laughs> Be no point. But if you did, I wouldn't. Oh God! For the sake of argument, you did. All right. For the sake of argument, I did. Right. Which I wouldn't. Oh. <laughs> right. That's it. That's what I'm wondering. Look, the point is, if you bought the house next door, it would cost you twenty thousand pounds, wouldn't it? Because if this house is worth twenty thousand pounds, then the house next door is worth twenty thousand pounds, isn't it? <laughs> Could be. A oh, public bound to be. They're identical houses. If this house is worth twenty thousand pounds, then the house next door is worth twenty thousand pounds, and the house next door to that, and the one next to that, and the one next to that. There isn't one next to that. <laughs> That's where the gap is. Oh, Who's the only bomb we had? That was it. There was Jews living next door to where they dropped that, and he reckoned that it was them they was after. <laughs> All right, Miss Smarty Pants, oh. the Germans had their intelligence, didn't they? Old Jowett was pleased about that bomb. Jowett? Yeah, at the corner shop, yeah. Pleased as punch he was. Why? Well, it gave him somewhere to put his van. Yeah. <laughs> it's worth a few bob, that old bomb site now. Oh, blimey, it's land, isn't it? Land, see? And that's one thing that your scientists, with all their technological skills, have never been able to make, isn't it? And that is land, see? And that's what I'm sitting on, little darling daughter. That's what your daddy's sitting on, £20,000 worth of land. Yeah, and you couldn't even sell it and buy next door and make a profit, could you? And you couldn't even buy next door, could you? No, and I'll tell you something else. What? Neither could your coons and your packies. No. <laughs> Too bloody expensive for them. And that's something else that your Tories have done, innit? See? Instead of letting your coons move in and buy the houses and lower your land values, they put up the price of your houses and your land, you see? And now your coons can't afford to buy them. Yeah. <laughs> Nor can anyone else. No, and there's something. There's nothing that your Labour Race Relations Board can bloody well do about it, is there? You. You're mad, you know that. Yeah, I know. You're bloody potty, I know, you know that. I know that. I know. Yeah, I, must no, yeah. potty. I must be potty. Let you live here for the rent with your pain. Oh. <laughs> we pay two pounds for one room. One stingy little room. Yeah, we're the ones that are bloody potty, mate. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you think two pounds a week rent is too much? Yes, Do you I mind? Yeah. That? Yeah. Yeah. Of course, uh, we don't mind mucking in a bit, like. Well, listen, Sonny Jim, let me straighten you out a bit on your economics, which you're so bloody full of. See, on the black day that you married my daughter and moved in here, <laughs> leave her alone, <laughs> and started to pay your £2 a week rent, this house had a market value of only £600. But now, over the years, that has risen till it now stands me in a market value of £20,000. Whereas, and on the other hand, and according to your own darling, Harold, your two pounds has fallen to the value of only 25 shillings. So now who's bleeding potty? So you want us to pay more? Not necessary. What, but um... I like him to realise that when he moved in here under the regime of your Labour government, yeah. he was paying two pounds a week rent for a room in a 600 pound house. Yeah. But now, thanks to me and the Tory government, he's only paying 25 shillings a week rent for a room in a 20,000 pound house. <laughs> So? So, under us, you've got on! 
And I'd like you to show a bit of bleeding gratitude, that's all. Go on! Yeah. Hey, go on! You're around the bloody twist, you no, are, you know that. that. Listen, on, this house was a slum when it was built, mate, oh, yeah. and it's a bloody slum now! Yeah, well, it's a £20,000 slum now, isn't it? <laughs> Listen, the way things are going at the moment, mate, you'll be paying a £1,000 for a loaf of bread soon. But it won't taste any better now, then, will it? Well, it should do for that man, mate. <laughs> And you'll be taking your wages home in a wheelbarrow, just like they did in Germany. All right, no need to bring Germany into it. Thank you very much. We don't want to hear about them and what they done. I know that we won the war and they done better out of losing it. It's another argument, isn't it? That's something that your Labour Party would not rather discuss for very obvious reasons. What are you talking about? You know what I'm... Your Labour Party's working man's internationale. That's oh, what I'm see. talking about. Because don't suit their book, do it? <coughs> no. Don't suit their book. We're getting prosperous at last, do it? Oh. We're getting prosperous? <laughs> what, England? Yes, Sonny, <laughs> England. Never mind your laughing, in spite of your Labour betrayals. Ooh. What betrayal? What Labour betrayal? Oh, look, all innocent, all wide-eyed and Shirley Temple, yeah. innit? Yeah. <laughs> Let me ask you, who was it? Who was it give East Germany to your Russians, eh? I don't know who did. But it wasn't bloody Churchill, was it, mate? But I always thought the Russians took it. I was sort of overran it during the war and it captured it. Oh, yeah? yeah? Well, so they might. But who helped them, eh? Who bloody helped them? Clement bloody Attlee, that's who that... <laughs> Two-faced, bolshy bastard. <laughs> Attlee wasn't in charge during the war. No, that was Winston Churchill. He was in charge during the war. I know that, but... He used to wear them hats. Look, why he... on the radio. I know. And smoke cigars. Look! He... he used to put his fingers up. <laughs> he used to put them up the other way to Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I know that, I know that. But while Churchill was fighting a war with the troops out there on the second front, see? God rest his soul. <laughs> the other one, little weasel-faced Atley, was skulking around back home here, wasn't he? Yes, working out what he was going to do after the war. Devising ways of means of lining the Labour Party's pockets with your Russian gold. I mean, gold promise. It's amazing. I mean, a church will never tumble him. And then Jesus never tumbled Judas until it was too bloody late, did he? <laughs> what are you on about then? Hey? You know what I'm on about. The sudden effluence of your Labour Party after the war. God blimey, it's obvious, wasn't it? They was all bloody working class. They didn't have two eightness to rub together, the lot of them. If, if it hadn't been for old Attlee. I mean, all they'd have had after the war was their demob money to take away in their cloth cats. I mean, it's plain what happened, you see. While Churchill was at your Yalta, talking things over with Stalin out in the open in front of everyone, bloody Attlee was skulking around behind the scenes there, see, flogging East Germany and India to your comrade Molotov. <laughs> no. It was Gandhi they give India to. Yeah, he got the temper, Gandhi did. Got the nice little paddy, he did. And he wouldn't eat till they give him India. Gandhi, Gandhi was starving before he went on that bloody hunger strike. I mean, he was a bloody skeleton almost before he started, didn't he? <laughs> he only had a loincloth to stand up in. But he was their leader, though. He was their religious leader. See, to your Indians, he was like a sort of Jesus. He was like a redeemer coming to them. No, I'm bloody laughing. <laughs> he, he looked like Jesus to them. But Jesus didn't wear glasses. <laughs> he wore a loincloth, though, didn't he? But Gandhi wore glasses. I wear glasses? Well, you don't look like Jesus, either. <laughs> well, Gandhi did! You look more like them what killed him. <laughs> Gandhi looked like Jesus to them. He lived like Jesus, didn't he? Lived amongst the poor just like Jesus. Renounced all worldly goods like Jesus. See? Because as the Lord Jesus saith, it will be harder for a rich man to pass through the eye of a camel <laughs> than for the needle to... As the Lord Jesus saith, <laughs> yeah, well, he wasn't a Tory then, that's for sure. And he wasn't one of your bloody Labour mob, neither. <laughs> no, he's probably a bit of a con, wasn't he? Well, cos his old man was a capitalist, wasn't he? God? <laughs> Blasphemia, Skarskit. But he's... he's bound 
want to be Alfie, he's bound to be a capitalist, isn't he? I mean, he owns heaven. He owns the world, according to the church. Yeah. The he made it, that's all. Ah, yeah, but the devil's got shares in it, hasn't he? I mean, he's got all the concessions on. Bingo holes, bunny clubs, betting shops and all yeah, that. And God's got the churches. Yeah! Why, well, I, I mean, the way properties goes up in God, blam, it's got to be well loaded. You dirty, scruffy, peroxide blonde. <laughs> <laughs> it's scouse punch you. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you mate. He'll have you, don't you worry about that. He'll see you burn. He'll have a fork up your backside, don't you worry about that. <laughs> Mate, and all it'll be. Yeah. God. Can't do nothing. No. No. Right. He'll have you. He'll have you. All right. to worry uh, about yeah. that. Right. I'll tell you what, I'll challenge him. Yeah. Hey? I'll challenge him. All right. If there is a god up there, I'll challenge him to uh, strike me dead in ten seconds from now. Yeah, well, he will, mate, with a bloody great thunderbolt. Don't you worry about that. <laughs> right. Yeah. Starting now. Look, not in this house. I ain't insured against acts of God. <laughs> <laughs> One. Get out. Two. Out of it. Three. Four. Five. Six. Did you pay policy this week? <laughs> Eight. Nine. Ten. Looking for me fags. Yeah. <laughs> Your fags. Only because you recounted just in time, didn't you? Yes. <laughs> yeah. don't, tell him, don't tell him. Look at him. <laughs> yeah. See that, did you? He got in the gear fast there, didn't he? Eh? I learned you a lesson that, Will, before you join up again with them communist god mockers. You try to destroy this bloody country, didn't you? All them strikes and go-slows and all your conniving with a bloody east. All out for something for nothing, ain't you? Hey, you're too bloody simple-minded to know how to get it. I mean, even the Irish. Look at the Irish. Thick mix. They sold out your Russians, they have. But we won't, mate. We won't. Don't you worry about that. See, your Enoch is wrong in having a go at the Coons. Oh! Well, he ain't seen the real danger. He ain't seen the real danger, has he? It's not from your Coons, I mean. Don't want them over here, stinking the country out with a bloody curry and... <laughs> playing on my dustbin lids all night long, but they're not a little bit. That's your Russian unions and your Chinese takeaways. Hot beds of fifth column activity, they are. Uh, we're on to them, don't you worry about that. We're on to them, mate. Next time one of them commie shop stewards goes inside the nick, he'll bloody well rot there. Did you see, they only pull them out on strike so they can get on the television. Oh, I blame... I, it's a fact. I bl it's not stupid at all. I blame the BBC for that. <laughs> Just encourage them to have anybody on the bloody telly these days. Rock and roll vicars, sex maniacs. <laughs> bloody Irish gunman on there the other night admitted the BBC did put a stocking over his head. But... <laughs> 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 they only let the Queen go on there the once at Christmas, that's all. You're going to be late for work if you don't hurry up. Yeah, well, there'll be no bloody work to go to soon if these unions have their way. Bloody curse of mankind, they are the bloody trade unions. They protect our jobs. Protect our jobs? Oh, blimey, I like that. Your dockers union, they was trying to take people's jobs off them just now. And what about all the prisoners? In, in the nick? In, in, in... I mean, they're having a bloody trade union now and all. Well, I mean, whose jobs are they trying to protect? I mean, who's after their jobs? Look, the, <laughs> look, the prison unions were formed to improve prison conditions. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they want their wives in there with them and all now, don't they? Yeah. And they're always complaining about the food, aren't they? They don't like the porridge, do they? Well, why have sugar in it, I suppose, for them? But why shouldn't they complain? All they get is bloody slops. Well, why shouldn't they get bloody slops? I mean, a prison is supposed to be a deterrent, isn't it? I'm supposed to sit about all day scoffing. <laughs> well, the next thing you know, they'll be moving Billy Butlin in to be in charge of your prisons. <laughs> we'll have redcoats in as warders. God. <laughs> Look, in the, never mind about in the old days, in the old days, they'd take your prisoners, chain them up and transport them out to your penal colonies, didn't they? Out to your Van Diemen's land. Can't even do that now, because these Labour parties give all the colonies away. <laughs> so we have to keep them here, don't we? And feed them out of our bloody taxes. And let me ask you a question. What happens if five of their ringleaders, see, disobey the law, and we want to put them in prison for contempt of court? We can't, can we? Because they're already in bloody prison. <laughs> They'll have to find their union. 
Don't talk bloody daft. What are they going to find them? 80 gallons of porridge, half underweight of hard pack. <laughs> What about your Chinese and your Russian doctors, eh? Oh, never yes. mind about poo, never mind about poo, eh? What happens if those Chinese and Russians, if they defy the law, eh? They wouldn't put them in prison, Sonny, would they? No, they'd put them up against the bloody wall and they shoot them! And I suppose you'd like them to shoot our doctors too, eh? But that's the trouble we won't! Oh, get... <laughs> that's the trouble with this country, we're too bloody soft! We'll never have a proper democracy here unless we shoot a few people like your Russians! <laughs> People. Oh, don't they, Miss Ignoramus? No, well, they shot a few under Stalin. God blimey. Almost ran out of people when he was in charge. You told us he was an American spy. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Stalin. Not... You said you said he lived down the Mile End Road and he was an American spy. No, all I said... Well, perhaps your dad was right. Perhaps that's why he shot all them Russians. No, he... He was a Jew, wasn't he? Oh, Dad. Oh, Stalin. Oh. Get up. Well, Mosley didn't like him, I know that. Well, God blimey, he was a communist, wasn't he? That's why Mosley didn't like him. He didn't like any Russians, did he? Why not? Because they was all bloody communists. I mean, bloody... When Mosley the tried Tsar to... The wasn't a communist. I know the Tsar wasn't a communist. I know that. Neither is our Macy the Queen a communist. No, well, she couldn't be. She wouldn't want to be, would she? Against her religion. Oh, blimey. You're bloody bright, you are. Sometimes your intelligence bloody well astounds me, it does. It's true. Look! She believes in God. I know that! And communists don't. Your communists don't believe in wealth, do they? I mean, they're against rich people, aren't they? Stalin was rich. Oh, God. He was a communist. Look. And so was Cozy Jin. Look, all I'm... And they like them. Look, Con... They made them leaders. I know that... So they do like some people, what's rich. Look, all but I... But they don't believe in any kind of God. Oh, God. Hey. I'm going to work! Hey. Buy your own bloody paper. Good riddance. Rats. <laughs> I sent him the wrong way. <laughs> You know, there's so much bloody sawdust in them, you can hardly find the tomatoes. <laughs> it's not fair, you know. It's cheating. <laughs> there's supposed to be 20 pound of tomatoes in them, but there's at least five pound of sawdust. It's dishonest trading, that is, because the bloke who buys them isn't going to get 20 pound of tomatoes, is he? He's going to be short, isn't he? So what's he going to do? He's going to pass his loss on to the customer. Your asswife. That's the trouble with society today, you know. Too many people after something for nothing. Who got all the priorities <laughs> for? Don't, uh, don't take them out of that case, George. It's a bit light already. Oh, all right. <laughs> Blimey, this one's a bit light too. Blimey, that's nearly all sawdust, isn't it? <laughs> that one's been opened on the other side, you know. Ah, oh, that's the way it's been bloody packed, mate. Bloody marvellous, isn't it? Where'd it come from? Canaries. Ah, oh, canaries, that's your commonwealth for you, you see. Yeah. Right. <laughs> the sooner we get into the common market and jack that lot, the better, I reckon. Yeah. Bloody thieving bastards. <laughs> Try another one. Yeah. Ah, this is a better one. Yeah, but it's still got more than its fair share of bleeding sawdust, though, isn't it? Yeah. Here, yeah, you know, I opened up the case of butter the other day. There was about four packets missing. And it wasn't us. 
been up, hadn't been opened on this side, you know. What, Australian? Yeah. Well, you can't expect any more from the Australians, can you? All right. I mean, they was bred from the criminal classes, weren't they? Yeah. <laughs> it's in their bleeding blood to be light-fingered, isn't it? Of course it is. And there's one over while you got it open, will you? Some matter, she's forgotten to pack my bloody sandwiches, that's what. <laughs> I've got no bloody lunch, have I? Isn't it fair, eh? I've got nothing to eat, have I? It's a bit rough, isn't it, Al? <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be hungry before the day's out, aren't you? I'm bloody hungry now, mate. It well, would be, yeah. Did you have any breakfast? Yeah. Just as well, you're going to need it later on, aren't you? <laughs> I need me bloody lunch too. Oh, you need a good lunch, yeah. I don't know how I'd get through the day without my lunch. Oh, that's nice. Ham. Do you like ham, Elf? Yeah. No, you ain't got no religious hang-ups about it, have you? Eh? Right? Well, I mean, some blokes, they don't eat ham, you know. You're Jew, he don't eat it. No. I... Nor you're Muslim, nor you're Mohammed. You're Catholics, you know, they don't eat no meat at all on Friday. No. I couldn't be doing with religion like that, you know. No, I like my food too much. Religions interfere with a lot of things, you know, but I reckon they shouldn't interfere with your eating. <laughs> I love a bit of ham. <laughs> I've got this butcher, you see, who cuts it just as I like. Quarter of an inch thick, yeah. plenty of fat. Oh, I'd have a bit of fat. <laughs> do you like a bit of fat, Alf? Yeah. I do. Gives it flavour. <laughs> Here. See that? <laughs> it's lovely, isn't it? See them veins of fat? Succulent, that. I like my food. Yeah, I like food. I prefer it to anything, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Some folks like, some blokes like booze, you see. Some like sex. With me, it's food. Yeah, I like food. That's why I never got married, I suppose. <laughs> Mind you, I'm not greedy like. I believe everyone should have his fair share, but I don't like it if it comes out of my fair. <laughs> <laughs> I nearly died during the war, you know. Yeah? yeah, I went down to 15 stone. <laughs> With all that rationing. <clears throat> you see, I didn't like Hitler any more than anyone else didn't, but I'd have gone over to him if there'd been any more food in it. <coughs> Must be rotten to be hungry. No, I'd hate to be hungry. Well, I know how you feel. I know how I'd feel. <laughs> I feel rotten just looking at you. <laughs> Sitting there, nothing to eat. I'd help you if I could help, but, you see, I can't bring myself to give you any of my sandwiches. Nothing personal, you know. It's just I've got this thing about food. Well, it's not me, really. It's me metabolicism that makes me the person I am. <laughs> I just love food, you see. Now, that's why I'm a socialist, I suppose. Because I want my share of the national cake. <laughs> of course, I go along with you Tories on one thing, you know. Once you've got your share, stick to it. God, I hate you bloody Tories. <laughs> when I think of all the food you've got, all that grub you're eating, not giving anyone else a share, Oi. all that bloody roast duck and pheasant, <laughs> and, and lovely cheese and things like that. God, you bloody Tories. <laughs> now, you can sit there, can't you? You can sit there and eat and eat and eat and still have plenty left to eat. No, 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 oh, no, no, lucky swines, aren't you? Right, if you, you can sit there with a vista. A vista of piles and piles of food, and all you've got to do the rest of your life is eat your way through it. Blimey. <laughs> I wish I could win the pools. Look at that. What's wrong with it? It's the last one. <laughs> what are you bloody talking about? You've got another one there. Oh, no, 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 no. That's my tea, isn't it? <laughs> The trouble with you Tories is, you see, you're a bloody swine, because I know, I know you don't always see eye to eye with us in the Labour movement, Alfred. Look what the sods have done now, eh? What? 
You put extra security on all the docks. Oh, we're onto that, are we? Listen, mate, the reason for your extra security is to stop the bloody pilfering that's going on in no, here. No, 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 it's not that. It's not that at all, Alf, you think. It's politics. Cobblers. No, it's politics. Get <laughs> old. Politics, you see. That extra security is political, mate. <laughs> no, no, it is, you see. They tried to get us for political reasons and they failed. They failed miserably. So now they're trying to nick us for criminal reasons. Oh, yeah. It's a thin edge, isn't it? Look, all the lads take out of these docks is in lieu of wages, right? No, it ain't right, mate. It ain't right at all. What they take out of these bloody docks is stealing, mate. God, bro, the way you're going on here, mate, they'll have to nail the bloody cranes down soon. <laughs> <laughs> Look, all they take out is their just rights, and the governors know that. And this extra security, well, it's a slight. It's a slight on the Dockers' character. At all. No, no, it's, it's an insult to the unions and the labour movement. I mean, look, they done over old Ginger Johnson last night. Yeah. I mean, Christ, he's not a criminal, is he? Ginger Johnson, I mean, I ask you, he's an honest man. Honest man? That honest man have found two cheeses, four legs of pork and a side of beef in the boot of his car. <laughs> honest man. Well, so they say. Not so they say, it's true, isn't it? Well, all right, it's true. Yeah, no. it's true. Yeah, but that's not a point, is it? It is the point. No, 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 the point is, they didn't know he had them when he searched him, did they? Well, of course they didn't. I mean, didn't. no, up till then, he was innocent, wasn't he? But so why did they do it? I'll tell you for why. Because he's a member of the Labour movement. No, if it and they're still it. upset about having to let those other five out. Ah, oh, we're on the five, eh? The precious five. <laughs> I thought we'd get round to the five sooner or later. Listen, mate, that five broke the law. That's why they went in a nick and I ought to have left them in there and all. Oh, 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 that's a very comradely attitude, isn't it? Very comradely. Those five broke the law because it was a bad law. The law? Comrade socialist is the law, and there's an end of it, isn't it? No, 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 that's where you're wrong, Al. Not an end to it. No. Well, it would have been an end to it if it had been prime minister, I tell you. Hitler passed a law, didn't he? Kill all the Jews. I mean, was that a good law? Not if you're a Jew, no. <laughs> would you have obeyed it? Look, Hitler's dead, isn't he? Ah, so are a lot of Jews, eh? <laughs> and so are a lot of Germans that obeyed his law. So you see, Al. You've got to think twice before you obey the law. Yeah, and you've got to think twice before you disobey the law with a bloke like Hitler in charge, ain't you? Hey, I bet your five, your five doctors, they, they'd have been a bit more careful about disobeying the law if Hitler had been in charge instead of Eve. Yeah. It wouldn't have been so keen to be bloody martyrs if old Adolf had been in charge, because he'd have made them martyrs, all right. Posthumous bloody martyrs, that's what... <laughs> <laughs> Hang on. Hasn't finished duty yet. <laughs> you know, it's a pity we're not on strike on a day like this. Have you noticed? The last four strikes we've had, it's pissed down. <laughs> I reckon it wouldn't be a bad idea to check the weather reports before they pull us out again. Well, I don't know how it happened. I cut Michael's. Cut yours, didn't I? Yeah. Ham, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Nice too. Yeah, it was nice. But I had no bloody lunch! <laughs> He's all right, he had his, didn't he? Bloody marvellous, isn't it? Well, I'm sorry. Yeah, you look it. You look bloody sorry, you bloody silly moo. It's dreadful, isn't it? Yeah, I had to go all day with nothing to eat just because. I'm not talking about that, I'm talking about the violence. Every time you turn the telly on, it's riots and industrial violence. Well, what do you expect? It's, yeah. it's summer, isn't it? Summer? What's the summer got to do with it? No that? football. Eh? Well, that is the cause of your industrial violence, isn't it? Ah, oh. oh, get up. It's nothing to do with football. It's your bloody government, mate. Oh, yeah. Well, that's yeah. where you're wrong, Mr Clever Dick, isn't it? Because people need violence, see? And during the football season, they get plenty of violence, don't they? On the park and off it. But comes the summer, there's no football, is it? No bloody food, see? So people, <laughs> they get frustrated, don't they? And have violence and have riots and... I mean, your cricket's no good, is it? Might be if they allowed a bit more of that body line bowling. Or better still, if they let the bowler chuck the ball at the batsman, see? <laughs> then, if he didn't like it, he could come tearing down a pitch and bust the bloody ball. <laughs> see? Played that way, your cricket might be some good because it's not enough for violence to be done. Your violence must be seen to be done. <laughs> but where's my bloody tea? You've had it. <laughs> but I haven't. 
I asked you last night if you wanted the ham for your tea or take it with you. You said take it with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I didn't, did I? Oh, no. Well, where is it then? I ate it. <laughs> you ate it? Well, somebody had to eat it. It couldn't leave it to go to waste. It cost 60 pence a pound, that ham did. Still, it was worth it. Very nice. <laughs> you bloody greedy pig! Right. So last time I buy you ham. <laughs> I'm going out of the pub! Oh, hang on, Dad, I'll come with you. Have you got any money? Hey, uh, no, well, I thought I've you learned, might... I learned a little lesson from your socialist comrades today. Your share and share alike brigade. What you've got, mate, you bloody well hang on to! <laughs> <laughs> 